Wild Bill on YouTube. It's been a long ride. I've been on YouTube now for 10 years today. I just, uh, I just checked my stats. And in that 10 years on YouTube, I produced roughly uh, 340 videos and slideshows. I posted 80 original songs. Uh, all, you know, recorded by myself, produced by myself, mixed and engineered by myself. All the arrangements are mine, all the lyrics are mine. I also blogged on matters scientifical, political, social, economic, um, artistic, and performance related. I, uh, I got to express myself. I got to act as I believe I'm supposed to act, as an artist, a one vector of unique or unusual thought and perspective in otherwise a homogenous society. As far as that goes, I believe I've fulfilled my brief. None of us knows if we have a day left, or two days left, or ten days left, or a hundred, or a thousand, or ten thousand. None of us knows. So it is incumbent upon us, each and every one, to pursue those things we love to their ultimate extension because to say someday I will have free time, I'll return to those things, is a lie. You won't. Over the course of a career of working and putting aside the things we love for the things we must do, we gradually build up a base of habit. And habit is one thing that older folks really enjoy. They really enjoy that habit. They don't want new ones. They want to keep the old ones forever. They want life to go on as it has. So when you get to the point where you finally have all that extra time, you're stuck in all those habits, one of which is the work habit. You don't know how to fill your days with unstructured activity. You only know how to structure your days and to fill them full of structured activity. So you're going to fill in all that space with either new habits, which you will learn, or an expansion of the old habits, which is the easiest. But in general, you will not be able to open your heart and soul again to embrace those things you put aside. I believe there are people that know that. That's why they set a retirement age. And I believe they take advantage of that because they know that when you leave the workforce, you will soon return because the habit you have built up over all these years of being in the workforce will not let you go and you won't even see it acting on you. You'll just feel antsy and anxious and not know what to do with all that structured time. Nothing will fulfill you. It's just like any drug. Nothing else can fulfill you. Once you have had the reinforcement of a drug for a whole career, how could you kick it? You can't. So you're gonna go back into the workforce. You're gonna be a greeter or a cashier again or whatever it is that you can still do in your broken down state and the system is happy to take you back at a much reduced wage. So it seems evident to me that someone at the top knows this, plans for this, and has created this system in which you will never be able to realize those things you love that you put aside so that you could be practical. To get to this point where you could now say, oh Lord God, please let me open my soul again because it is closed fast. What should I do? I'm the opposite. I'm the opposite of all you responsible folks. And I thank you for being in the world, by the way. I've never been able to put two practical feet together on the same path ever. I've never had any ability to focus on anything but art. And even art was something I could barely approach until recently in my life. 
the last five or six years, infirmity has brought me to the point where I must sit for long periods of time. And during that time, I wondered, what can I do? What can I do? Well, it turned out that my life and experience was full of exit strategies for the working experience, but it had no strategies to be a worker. The same thing, only different. For you guys, you have no strategies for becoming an artist, but you have plenty of strategies for being a worker. Look how good you are at it. So, how can I learn to be a good worker and promote and advance my talent to the point where it supports me? Wow, there's my conundrum. Hard to open my soul like that at this age. And for you guys, how are you going to cross over from that habitual pattern of Doran's vial, of working, something that you don't really love, but you now feel compelled to go back to because it is the only thing that will fill that hole in your time, just like any drug. <laughs> so you're better than me. Different, but better than me. I don't do what you do. I don't support a house and a car and a family. I don't have those commitments that other people have. I don't make time for other people because I don't have that time for other people. I only have that time for art. For those of you that have been waiting to re-embrace that artist within you, that time will never come because you are now unable to depart from all those social interactions that you have built up, some of which are work-related some of which are just lifestyle related. How can you give them up now? More habits, more habits you don't want to lose, more habits that define you as the person you have been for your entire working career, 40 years, and now you want to change. So you have to make a determined effort to do this like you do with anything, like you do in any halfway house, like you do in any rehabilitation center. You have to recognize you have a problem and you have to take arms against that sea of troubles and by so doing end them, as uh, the great bard once said. I recommend that you begin by going back to that thing you put aside and saying to yourself, today I am going to put an hour into it, an hour into it. Today I am not going to let more important things distract me from this thing that I love so much, I almost gave up life for it. I'm going to say that those things are the distractions now, and that this art, this craft, this interest that I've decided to pursue in my retirement is the important thing. There's the problem you're gonna find, because you've already prioritized everything in your life, and that's so low on your list of priorities it doesn't exist. How can you put it up at the top? Well. You managed to build all those other habits. Time to build the right ones. Now that you've already got all the habits of being responsible and keeping your end of the bargain up, good for you, really. Now it's time for you to show that you can exceed me as an artist, too. For those of you that don't know me as an artist, that means nothing. I'm just some old guy blathering. For those of you that know me as an artist, you'll think like, yeah, he makes it sound easy. And I do. I will have a series of blogs posted on how to make yourself an artist if you have the talent, how to look at art as an artist to make the talent. But it starts at, and it all starts with, having that block of unstructured time that you are willing to create a new habit within. You are willing to devote that time to the exclusion of all else, to your art, to your craft, to your science, to your interest outside of work. I'm eager to hear what you folks come up with when you say I spent that hour and I got so bored I, I had to watch television. I spent that hour listening to music somebody else wrote. I spent that hour watching something else, doing something else, not re-embracing that thing that I put aside for necessity, that love I put aside for necessity. The whole point is to re-embrace that love you're now good at the necessity. Okay, you win the prize. 
now prove that you are going to be good with the part that comes after the necessity, the embracing the loves, embracing the things that comfort and soothe your soul, not just your habit. Well, Bill. All the way around. <laughs>